Dr. Jeremy. Thank you all for this opportunity. So the name is Josephine in Safo. Uh, even some of my colleagues can't get it right. So I think we'll let you off the hook for that. <laughs> right. So um, the project we are working on is the impact of breast and cervical cancer educational interventions in Ghanaian high schools. Um, sorry about that. I will unshare and reshare. For some reason, the slides are not moving. And as Dr. Josephine is doing that, I'll just uh, remind everyone that some of our medical students who may be present may um, have to leave a few minutes before the hour is up so that they can get to their class um, and thank them for attending. But please feel free to leave if you need to leave. I'll back over to you, Dr. Josephine. Okay, right. So my co-investigators include Dr. Brownson and then a huge team in Ghana. So for those of you who don't know where Ghana is, so Ghana is in West Africa. Um, we don't have winter. We have two seasons, the rainy season and the dry season. So either it's really, really hot or it's really, really wet. It's a lovely place. I wish you all visit. Dr. Price has been here a few times. So Ghana, we have 16 regions. And um, along the line, you will hear me say the greater Accra region, that's down here in the orange, and that's where the capital city is. And then next to it, we have the central region. So our project so far is in those two regions. So a bit of background. Um, when you look at the figures, breast and cervical cancers are the leading female cancers in Ghana and the leading cancers in uh, leading cause of cancer deaths among women. Um, however, the level of breast and cervical cancer awareness is low, and 60% of cancers in Ghana are diagnosed at stage three and four. And this is due to ignorance and fear and all sorts of myths and misconceptions that are deeply rooted in the community. But we believe that these beliefs are formed in childhood. And so we decided to focus our projects among the youth. So the aim of our project is to deliver a breast and cervical cancer educational intervention in Ghanaian high schools and assess its impact on their knowledge and practices. So to achieve this, we came up with a standardized educational package which we deliver to the schools and then we will test the retention of knowledge uh, at two points in time. So the educational package consists of a drama or a little play, then a talk with all the information and facts, a Q&A session, and then some information leaflets which we designed. So we actually did do a pilot study. Um, before COVID, we visited a few schools and we collected data in two of those schools and we published that recently in BMC. So this publication is on the breast cancer aspect. And it was pretty clear that learning did take place, that the overall knowledge improved from 17 to 60%. So we applied a post-test three months after this intervention. And in various aspects, also we saw improvement. So for this particular study, we're going beyond the pilot study, um, and it's a quantitative experimental study. Um, and it would be amongst some senior high schools in Ghana. There are 928 of these. We're hoping to target approximately 5%. 
um hope and we want to select mostly mixed schools but some single sex well not just single sex girl schools not only we wouldn't go to boys only schools so mixed schools and some girl schools and the age of our high school school students is between 15 to 18 years. High school here in Ghana is three years after a three-year junior high school program. And so we actually selected 40 schools from these two regions, Greater Accra and Central Region. 20 schools in Greater Accra Region, 20 schools from the Central Region. So the beginning part of the project, we went back for the educational materials we used for the pilot study and try to refine them based on our experience uh, at the time and uh, develop them and took them to someone to publish and all that. What's the new thing we did introduce is actually an information booklet because this time we want to train others to teach the students. The first time we did the teaching and we are a team of breast surgeons and gynecologists. So all the information really was in our head. We prepared our five-point slide and we handled the the students. This time round, um, we figured with our busy schedules, we can't take this too far. So we want to teach, the uh, train the teachers, the school teachers, the high school teachers to actually um, teach the, the school children. And so we approached the Ghana Education Service. They are in charge of schools and the Ghana Health Service because they have nurses stationed at these schools. And so there's the School Health Education Program Unit of the Ghana Education Service, which is responsible for that. And in each of the schools, they've identified school teachers. It may be a geography teacher, it may be an art teacher, science teacher. They have a teacher in each school who is interested and is responsible for health education. So these are the people who um, we train to go and take this information to the schools. So the phase three of the project, which is where we are now, is the um, school interventions. So the teachers and the, and the education officers go back to the schools and replicate what uh, we taught them. So we do start with the pre-test and then we deliver the drama, the education and all that. Then this time round, we decided to test the knowledge twice at three months and at six months. So just to point out the differences in the pilot study we did. The pilot study, we didn't have any information booklet. It was surgeons who did the teaching. Um, the pilot study, we gave our individual leaflets, but this time the numbers are huge. So rather we designed an information card. So even with about five or six copies in a school, it's been blown up and it can be used in a health club or it can be pasted on the walls or passed around during teaching sessions. Um, this time we are doing 40 schools and we selected, uh, actually I think it's 14 schools that we will uh, collect data from. We, we can't collect data from all the 40 schools. At the pilot study, you see it was just girls, but this time we're going to involve, um, involve boys as well as girls because in our culture, when they grow up, men actually do influence um, the decisions women take. So we need to get them educated as well. So this time the education is to be done by school teachers and school nurses with the support from the education office. And we decided to see if we could get a slogan or something for the school children that might catch on. And then at three months, we want to do a recap and then assess the knowledge at three and six months. So incidentally, we, we, we started in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and three months should be January, spilling over into February, which is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. So these are some of the educational materials we, we did. So we have a PowerPoint slide, and the schools we went to, they do have projectors and a hall, they can use this, but we translated the PowerPoint slide, the exact copy into a flip chart, which is what you see here. So it's an A3 size flip chart. So if you, you are in a school or in a classroom where you don't have a projector, you can use the flip chart for teaching, especially if it's a classroom or smaller group, the whole school, the PowerPoint is more appropriate. 
So the drama is just a, a simple 20 minute um, script where you have a group of young, young ladies and uh, it's just a teaser, an introduction to the lecture. And it's full of the funny, funny myths and misconceptions that we have in our community. And it gets the, the, the children interested and we laugh a little bit. And then we settle down for the talk. Now, at the end of the drama, you will hear them say, no, go, do. And we, this is the slogan we, we, we try to put in the whole production. So it's in the PowerPoint slide. It's on the flip chart. It's in the drama and on the um, information card. So the no stands for know the symptoms. And that is know the symptoms of breast or spinal cancer. Go to hospital. That is for your screenings, whether it's uh, pap smear or breast examination or mammograms, and then do your screenings. Um, yeah, so this is what the the activity card or the information card looks like. One side is green with the breast um, with cervical cancer information and the pink side for breast cancer. And it's basically a summary of um, the signs and symptoms, the examinations, the guidelines on screening or getting pap smear and cervical cancer immunization is all summarized on this card. And we have our slogan on it there, no go to. And then this was the new introduction. We, we wrote uh, a little information booklet or training manual. So it has more details in there about still very simple and basic for non-scientists or non-medics to understand about breast and cervical cancer. Now, when we did the pilot study, we visited about eight schools. We actually kept all the questions the children asked. They wrote them on little paper. Some of them asked. We tried to record these, and we and we realized that we we're getting the same sort of questions. So we managed to answer these questions. 68 FAQs on breast cancer and 63 FAQs on cervical cancer, and we've included that in the booklet. So we give these to those who came for the training workshop. So we've had three training workshops, two in the greater Accra region and one in the central region. So we moved to them. And in total, we trained 154 participants. So each school is represented by the school teacher who is responsible for health education and the assistant head master or headmistress of the school. Because for the schools to be able to own this we needed to get the administration involved. So the assistant head of each school plus the, the teacher was invited. And with, I think we had 100% turnout, if not more. And then the school nurses for each school, in addition to 28 um, officers from the education office. So the training workshops were quite interesting and they were very enthusiastic. Um, though this program is for the kids, the adults really enjoyed it. So the picture at the top there, you can see them. We actually just surprised them and gave them the script to act out the drama. And they had fun with that. Um, we went through, there were questions and answers. You can see them all being taught how to do a breast self-examination to pass on to the children. Now, this lady in the pink top is a breast cancer survivor, a very young lady. So we gave her a few minutes to share her story. And that really did it. And... I remember one of the teachers saying that, honestly, if it wasn't that he's seeing her with his own eyes, as far as he knows, breast cancer is never curable and is a death sentence. So even we managed to make an impact amongst the adults who came for the training. And we trust that they go out and be able to impact the children in the secondary schools. We also did a pre and post test there and there at the training workshop for the participants. Um, most people believe that breast cancer is painful. So people sit there with huge lumps till so it becomes painful. So you see that uh, the teachers and educationists, 36% uh, of them actually thought it was painful. But at, by the end of the day, at least 80% now have learned that breast cancer usually doesn't start with pain. Um, keeping handkerchiefs, mobile phones is something we believe can cause breast cancer. So you realize that 23% of them at the beginning knew that this wasn't a cause. But by the end of that workshop, 90% of them now got that question correct, that no longer believe that these putting objects in your brazier or brazier sleeping, all sorts of 
made surround braziers causing breast cancer. So we hope we, deb we debunk that. And I think they were not aware that cervical cancer is a sexually transmitted disease. So now the school interventions are going on. I think we've probably done about close to 20, some, at least eight of the schools are on vacation. We are waiting for them to get back and do theirs. And from the, uh, well, I, I visited a school, Prof. Visited another school, the pictures and the reports we are getting from the school, you can see that the students themselves are having fun with this. They are really participating. There's one picture here, you see the drama and the drama in each school is always different and interesting. I mean, they've created some picture frames, taking pictures, putting on pink ribbons. It was different in every school. So they are really having um, fun with that and we hope that they are learning. So the next step will be to complete the school interventions. We are probably almost halfway through and then we need to retrieve all the questionnaires. Um, today, even we had to send questionnaire by public transport, put it on a bus to get to one town in the central region. So the teacher will have to go to the, the transport station, the bus station to pick up the question. So even distributing and retrieving um, questionnaires, uh, can DHL everything to every corner. So that too, we are working on that. So soon we'll start the data entry. And then three months time, we'll have the second intervention. It wouldn't be the drama and the full blown Thing, but there will be a recap of information somehow and a pretest at that session as well. Then three months after that, there wouldn't be a recap, but there will be a final test of their knowledge. And then we'll run it all in and analyze that data. I'd really want to thank the Gardner Hold Women's Health Grant Program um, from University of Utah Center for Global Surgery. It's been a great opportunity to be able to carry this little project which we started and we called it the changing young minds project and now we've been able to take it further to 40 schools and we'll see what the future holds I want to thank dr jairaman want to thank dr price kest and dr brownson my co-investigator um we, we thank our local education service and health service because getting access to these schools when we did the pilot was tricky. But now because it comes from the top, it's very easy getting all the schools on board. Thank you all very much for your attention.